All right. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we'll start today with Coach Loxley, and we'll do take football questions first. And then Coach will be joined by uh, Rachel Barbeau of I'm Changing the Narrative for questions on tomorrow's mental health awareness game. So if you have a football question for Coach, please send me a chat, and we'll get started. Emily, you could start. Didn't even have time to message you. Um, I was just going to ask about Greg Rose. Um, I know we've talked a little bit about him, but when he came here as a transfer walk-on, um, what did you kind of expect from him then? And, and how has that changed and how has he developed over the past like two years now? Yeah, I think Emily, the big thing with Greg was, you know, he came highly recommended because uh, Mark Duda up at Lackawanna is a, a dear friend of our program, former Turk. Uh, and then he played for Elijah Brooks, our, my running back coach at, at DeMatha. And so, um, you know, even the walk-ons that we bring in, we evaluate them no different than we do scholarship players. And, you know, we had a need there. Uh, you're always looking for uh, defensive linemen and O-linemen. And if you can get a couple of them free that actually have the ability to play, you know, that's a plus for your program. And so, you know, Greg was a guy that came in unheralded. Um, not a lot of fanfare, not a lot of people kind of even – knew or, or, or had any expectations, but what I found, and, and, you know, last year was surprising that you guys didn't necessarily notice, but like he played in that Penn State game for us and played big and, you know, started playing uh, quite a bit for us last season as the season ended, obviously with COVID, you know, when you had players in and out every week because of you know, who was able to play, who wasn't, it really kind of gave us the opportunity to evaluate him in game situations. And he has just taken every opportunity that he's been given and, and really flourished with it. And, and very similar to what Kobe Thomas did last week. And I've been really proud of, you know, those players in our program as much as some of the guys that you guys like to talk about. We'll go to Jacob Richmond. Hey, Coach. Uh, you know, we talked a lot about uh, Talia's chemistry, particularly with his wide receivers, but I'm just kind of curious, what have you seen uh, in the developing relationship and chemistry between Talia and his offensive line? Because they've been, you know, getting better and better. I know you said from last year to this year it was a big jump, but it seems like every week they're improving. Yeah, I think the big thing with that is there's a lot of confidence that those guys understand. If you give him time, he'll make plays for you. And I think there's a, also the same uh, same kind of respect that Leah has for the job those guys have done for him. And, you know, that's the brotherhood of playing offense and playing as a team. And, you know, that's the great thing with football being the ultimate team sport that, you know, Leah can't do it by himself and he'll get a lot of the accolades because he's the quarterback. And, and But there's a lot of moving pieces and parts that allow him to do the things he does. And nobody understands that more than him because of the type of personality he has um, he doesn't like doing media. He kind of shuns away from having the, the spotlight being shined on him. And um, I think those players really appreciate that about him because he's team first, Leah second. We'll go to Jacob Steinberg. Hey, Coach, for a lot of your younger players, Friday night is going to be uh, arguably the biggest game they've ever played in. So just for you and your staff, how do you make sure that they – kind of stay even keeled and don't allow the emotions of the game to kind of get to them. Yeah, I don't think they realize that this is going to be the biggest game because every week they play the biggest game they've ever played in because it's the first opportunity uh, to play this game. And, you know, I know it sounds like coach speech and, and you don't like it, Jacob, probably. But, I mean, we're, we're sticking to what we do each week. Uh, every week there's a big game for us and we've earned the right to have big games and, these young players are going to continue to grow and learn. And, you know, I, I continue to caution everybody. I mean, we're, we're still a work in progress. Uh, we're still in the growth phase of our program. Are we a little further ahead of schedule? Possibly, but that's yet to be determined. And we'll find out because we've got a great opportunity and a great opponent in Iowa that uh, will be a great measure and stick and a great test for us as to where we are as a program. We'll go to Julian Bessina. Um, just to stay on track with that idea of, of a measuring stick, uh, what do you think the offense can learn from uh, a defense as disciplined and, and as opportunistic as Iowa? 
Well, again, we don't spend a lot of time uh, worrying about Iowa. I think what we spend our time and what we need to learn is how not to beat ourselves, uh, get back to playing the standard of football we want to play on offense, which is uh, not not have the self-inflicted wounds, sacks, drops, penalties, uh, interceptions, fumbles. Those are all controllable variables that, that we can control on offense. And if we control those things at a high level and then we generate explosive plays, we'll have ourselves a good ball game. And uh, to me, that's what we've got to learn. You know, last week, you know, the margin of error that we keep up with, we were like 19%, that which meant 19% of the plays last game had some form of a self-inflicted wound, a drop, a penalty on offense, a fumble, an interception, or a sack. And, you know, the threshold for us is under 12%. And for us going against a team like Iowa that doesn't beat itself very often, on offense, we got to play clean, we got to execute, and we got to make sure our margin of error is under that 12% to give ourselves a chance to be in the game. Thank you. No problem. Does anyone else have a football question for Coach Loxley? Emily? Um, did, did Brandon practice at all this week? Hey, hear you. Brandon, Brandon Jennings, did he practice? I think you're frozen. I can't hear you, Emily. <laughs> no, Brandon, no, did, not, Brandon okay. did not practice at all this week. So he moved from a game time decision to he's out. So go ahead and get it out quickly, as fast as you guys can tweet it. Brandon Jennings is out. You heard it here live, Coach Locks. All right. So now we'll go to Rachel Barbeau from I'm Changing the Narrative. Um, she'll have a few remarks about why this mental health awareness game is so important and what it means to her. And then we will take questions for her and Coach. Hi, hey everybody. Um, I first of all just want to say how excited I am to, to be here. And what's really neat about this is the fact that I used to um, be on your side of, of what you're doing. I did this for 17 years. And so to see you asking your questions that are going to then turn into stories that are then going to turn into press that's generated around the world and the country is, is really, really neat for me. Um, so, but beyond that, I just want to say thank you for, um, for your interest and thank you for paying attention to this. Listen to me, the more people that talk about mental health, the more people that um, bring it up in conversations and normalize it and make it a everyday thing, the less people struggle alone, the less people get isolated, the less people get off by themselves and get in dangerous places. I know because I have been there. And so I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you, because every piece of media, everybody, everybody with a voice, everybody with a platform like you guys that is talking about mental health, you have no idea the seeds you're planting. You have no idea the people you are helping. So I just really wanted to say thank you more than anything as somebody who sat where you sat for 17 years and is now on the other side. I'm just incredibly grateful that um, that you're interested in, in what Coach Loxley, myself, Maryland, my movement, I'm changing the narrative are doing this week and throughout the year to affect and change the narrative on mental health. All right, who has a question on tomorrow's mental health awareness game? Emily? Um, this, is, this is for Coach Loxley and Rachel. I, I'm just curious how you've seen like football as a sport improve in this regard and I imagine it still has a, a long ways to go so so where would you like to see how mental health is treated in football um, specifically change through the years yeah I can say for me uh, because again as you guys know del dealing with mental health in my own household um, with my son Miko um, it's changed considerably because learning and, and going through the things experience we went through as a family with Miko it opened my eyes and, and, and I can tell you, I can think back to when I first got into this business in 92 as a, a young coach and the look that I saw in Miko's eyes where I felt like I could see his soul. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen that look before with my players. And as a young coach, I didn't recognize that look or know what it meant. Um, sometimes you oftentimes assume, are you on drugs? What you, what's going on? What's wrong with you? Why are you acting like this? And it's hard for a person going through these things to verbalize what they feel. 
And so because of it, I've become a champion for it. Um, you know, watching and I got to know Rachel back in 2017, I think, or 2018 when she came and spoke at Alabama. And just I saw the impact that her speech and her talk had on our players about, hey, you don't you can be a gladiator and still take off the mask and say, look, I'm I'm not doing OK. And so for me, it became, you know, after losing Miko and and going through the struggles of what mental health uh, brings about. I made a promise to myself that, you know, from the tragedy of losing him, that I would use my platform to ensure that any player I recruited, I uh, created a safe haven for them to feel like anytime something's going on, open door policy, cry for help. I look for it to where they don't even have to ask. And that's why, you know, I know some people say, oh, he's a player's coach. Well, I'm a firm believer. You can never be too close to your own children. So I embrace players coach. If I can look at a player and say, hey, what's going on right now? What's what's up? And I've been able to do it. I know what it looks like. And I'm fortunate that I work at a place where, you know, Damon and, and Colleen and my bosses provide me with all the resources that I need to make sure when we talk about helping our players be the vers best version of themselves, we talk about football, we talk about academic, but we also talk about socially. And to me, this, this ability to be able to support these guys this way uh, means the world to me. Emily, do you see why I love him? <laughs> I mean, seriously, like, um, you know, he's, uh, it's the truth. It's, that's who he is. And, and look, to answer your question, um, do we have a long way to go? Absolutely. But have we made some incredible ground over the past few years? Yes, yes. And every time I see mental health being talked about on Twitter and with, you know, professional athletes and all sorts of people, it, it, um, it gives me hope that we're moving in the right direction. And the thing about Coach Loxley is, look, I, I do this work. I go to colleges all over the country. I work with Customs and Border Patrol and law enforcement and prison ministry and high schools. But I, I do this work all over the country. But it's so imperative that when I leave, right, and, and, and I create relationships, when I leave, that a coach then instills in his coaches and in his everyday life, one, you can come to me if you need help. Because here's the three things that I hear at colleges across the country, whether they're true or not. This is what I hear from male and female athletes, why they don't ask for help. I'm afraid to lose my scholarship. I'm afraid to be seen as weak. And, um, and, and I'm afraid let's see, to be seen as weak and to lose my scholarship and, and, uh, and also to lose playing time. That's the, the third one. And whether those things are true or not, those are the three things that I hear at colleges across the country. So why is it imperative for men like Coach Mike, Mike Loxley to be in the forefront and for him to teach his coaches and other coaches how to do this? It's because they know every other day of the year they can come to him and say, Coach, I'm not okay. Coach, I need some help. And they won't be seen as weak. In fact, they'll be seen as a gladiator, as a warrior, as a king. We'll go to Dylan Spilka. Hey, Coach. Uh, for you, what does it mean to have this mental health awareness game being played on a day where there is already a ton of media attention when you guys are playing a top five team in the country? Just how does that kind of uh, enhance the overall awareness of it? Yeah, you know, the good thing is this thing was set up and scheduled way back in the summer. Um, uh, something Rachel and I had talked about. I ran it up the uh, chain of command here with, with my bosses and, and, and the athletic department has really gotten behind it. Uh, Rachel's changed the narrative cause. Iowa has gotten involved. And so we didn't know it would be this, have this type of magnitude. Didn't know that this game would be a game that, it's, that has been created. So to me, it's a win-win. Um, it's a great, great opportunity uh, for Maryland football to, to play a, a big time game at home, but also a time to use a national television platform um, to bring, bring light or shine light on a cause that is really, really near and dear to my heart and that every player in my program understands and knows that how important it is to me. And then to have Rachel here and, and Iowa also taking part in it really, really sends a strong message. If, if I may, too, I think the whole one of our big goals, um, Coach Loxley and myself, and, and the first time we did this at Minnesota was if there's one person in the stadium that looks at a football team and looks at this joint PSA that was released this morning and says that big bad football player takes off his mask and talks about mental health. 
oh my gosh, Coach Loxley is talking about mental health. Oh my gosh, Kurt Parents is talking about mental health. I can talk about mental health, right? Because they are the echelon. They're up here. They're the they're the big, bad, tough football coach or player. And so our whole goal with this, or my goal, I can say, is if one person in the stadium feels less alone, if one person in the stadium feels less defective, if one person in the stadium says, wow, they they're talking about mental health, I can do it too, then we win. And we'll never know, I said this to somebody else this morning, Coach Loxley will never know the seeds he has planted um, in this world. That the young people that he pours into, he talked about being a players coach and being close to his players. You can't be too close to your players, but he'll never know generationally who goes home and then teaches their kids this and then their kids and their kids. And so it's it's really generational. And um, I know that we are going to achieve this goal. I know we already are doing this with the radio show we did last night, the PSA, the press, the the helmet stickers, the green ribbons we're going to wear, all the things that are going to happen, and just super pumped about it. We'll go to Jacob Steinberg. Uh, this one's also for both Rachel and Coach. Rachel was kind of talking about it earlier, and I know Anthony spoke about it on Tuesday, how the perception from a lot of athletes, if they do talk about their mental health struggles, is that they can per be perceived as um, soft and not looked at in the same way by their teammates. So just beyond the scope of just football and athletics in general, just how beneficial do you think a night like this can be to kind of put that at the forefront? Not only, I know a lot of football players, it's perceived as one of the more tough and physical sports, but for athletes just across all of campus um, to be talking about their mental health, just how beneficial do you think that can be? I'll let Rachel lead on this one and then I'll finish it. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll go even bigger. It's not just athletes. It's everybody on this campus. Last night at his radio show at Looney's, our, uh, our waitress, uh, we were talking to her. Her name is Hallie. And we were talking to her and we told her what we were doing. And she said, she put her hand on her heart and she said, oh my, I'll be there at the game. And she said, oh my gosh, this is so needed. So it's beyond athletics and, and what we're doing with the game and everything that I mentioned earlier and something that we haven't really talked about yet we brought a, I'm changing the narrative, brought a chair to Maryland this week. And it's really a symbolic chair that, that people can look at and then they can go home and they can find their own chair. But it was at the, uh, the soccer game the other night. It'll be at the field hockey game tonight and it'll be on the concourse at the football game tomorrow night. And what this chair is, is a blue regal comfy chair in which you wanna get in there and take off the mask. And so you walk up to this chair and there's a one sheet there that says, Hey, listen, um, sit in this chair and take off your mask. And there's a series of questions and the questions, and I'm happy to provide this to anybody who may need it, the one sheet, but the series of questions are, um, what is something you've been through in your life that, that was tough or meant to kill you and it didn't? What did you learn from it? If you took off your mask today, what would you share with people? How are you being a king or queen or royal every day of your life? What kind of legacy do you wanna leave? And so the chair, is symbolic. Yes, you can get in the chair, you can take a picture, you can tag us. You can even answer the questions in the chair and, and tag us, or you can keep the video for yourself. Or if you're not comfortable with any of that and this is new to you, you take the one sheet and you take it home and you begin to have conversations in your home, in your workplace, in your community about mental health. And you can even go to imchangingthenarrative.org and download the one sheet, you just hit chair. So beyond the game, beyond the ribbons and everything else we're doing, we are starting conversations around mental health that people can take back to their own homes, their own communities, their own teams and change the narrative. And that to me just absolutely blows my mind. There's nothing I need to add. <laughs> we'll go to Jacob Richmond. This question can be for uh, either Rachel or Coach Loxley, but uh, what do you guys see as the importance of addressing mental health in season, especially when, you know, for a team like Maryland, I would say out of their control, but, you know, they have shorter weeks sometimes. It means putting in more work. Um, you know, what, what does it mean to be addressing that in season? Yeah, I mean, it, mental health doesn't have a season, Jacob, unfortunately. Um, and to me, that's the part that uh, it's a day-to-day -day basis. I can tell you, you know, this week alone, we've dealt with two or three issues of players that have had some, uh, some issues where they weren't okay and we had to spend time with them and we had to provide some resources. And so I wish it could just kind of be a season, but this is an every day, every minute, every hour challenge 
And I'm here for it. You make time for the things that are important to you. This football team is important to me. These young men are important to me. Uh, There's community I serve here, being a, a community member here and growing up in this area and seeing in my underprivileged areas that I grew up in, so many people that have struggled with mental health to be labeled, oh, he's just crazy or what's wrong with him. Um, I, I'm gonna make time for things that are important to me. And so whether it's a football game uh, of this magnitude, this is something that needs to be talked about and talked about often and, and not have a season, so. I just wanna add as somebody who um, you know, gets to partner with, with Maryland on this, the fact that coach in Maryland said, let's do this on the Iowa game, that's tremendous. That, that, is, that is noteworthy because, and, and not to disrespect any other team or a non-conference game, but back in, the, back in the spring, or excuse me, back in the summer when we started playing this, they said the Iowa game. And there are other people out there, other coaches, and, and I'm, I'm not here to disparage anybody that would say, hey, you know, let's do that at one of our, um, our lesser known games. Let's put it here. But Maryland and Coach Loxley said, let's do it at Iowa, right? Like, let's do it. We have eyeballs when the pressure's on, when it's a short week. We're going to say mental health is of importance. And we're not just going to say it. We're going to show you that we mean that. And that, to me, whoo, <laughs> that's everything. That's saying this is, this is actually important to us. Does anyone have anything else? Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Rachel. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thanks, guys. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank y'all.